guys. Uh, Shoe Bandit here. Long time no talk. I know. I've been really bad about my whole monthly plan. Yeah. But I actually have a topic that's near and dear to my heart that I really want to address with you guys because it's something that's been coming up a lot that not necessarily just online. I've seen it in comic form. I've seen it around in my job and just in the public in general. For those of you who don't know, I am a licensed massage therapist or LMP, which is licensed massage practitioner, which means that I give clinical healing therapeutic massages. And there are a lot of misconceptions about massage, about what they do or don't do, uh, whether they're painful, to, if they're too soft, relaxing, things like that, and I wanted to address some of these things. Um, I have a list. Number one, when you go in for a massage and you're paying for it, you really get to dictate what happens. So if you're going in for a therapeutic massage with a therapist that you've never seen before and you're not comfortable with them, say you're a woman go seeing a man or a man seeing a man, a man seeing a woman, woman seeing a woman, and you're just, you've only just met this person and you're not comfortable lying naked on a table with just a sheet between you and them, you don't have to take off a single article of clothing that you don't want to. It's that simple. The only thing that is really considered that is considered polite to take off are, is your shoes. If you are not comfortable taking off nothing but, except just taking off your shoes and your coat, and you want to leave your shirt and your pants and your underwear and your socks and your tie and whatever else on, that is fine. That is your right. That is your prerogative. You are the client. You get to decide your level of undress. Your therapist should start your session with undress to your comfort level. If that means that you're not comfortable taking off your shirt, that means you're not comfortable taking off your shirt. You don't have to do that. It is now my job as a therapist to work around that. We've been trained in that. We, part of our training includes chair massage, which is fully clothed. Shiatsu is fully clothed. There are different modalities of massage where you are fully clothed. We know how to work around it. Don't feel bad about leaving your clothes on. It's fine. Secondly, the pressure of your massage. If you like deep pressure, let me know that you like deep pressure. If you like it light, if you can't handle a lot of pressure, let me know. Let your therapist know. We're not mind readers. You gotta tell us if we, therapists should always start off light because you gotta warm up the tissue before you go digging your elbows into things. Otherwise you're gonna cause damage. But if they're going and it's been 15, 20 minutes and they haven't deepened their pressure and you like deep pressure, let them know. Tell them you want more pressure. It's that simple. We will, we are trained to do that sort of thing. That's what we do. Or vice versa. If we go in and we find a spot that we know we need to dig into and we start digging and it's too much, let us know. We'll lighten up. Yeah, there's a reason that we're digging into that spot, but we're not trying to hurt you. There is a scale that we're aiming for here. It's a, it's a pain scale of 1 to 10, and it's personal for everybody. 1 is you don't even feel me touching you. 10 is the most excruciating pain in your life. Take you to the doctor and have them put that you out of your misery. We're aiming for about a 7. 7 is that magical number on the pain scale that tells us that we are doing something right. If you go above 7, like you can fudge it to 8, but you really don't want to. So if you're getting up there, then your muscles are seizing and they're constricting and they're bracing and they're doing everything they can to keep me out which is by me still pushing on it and it's causing that much pain causing damage that's how you pull muscles because your muscle that's how you cause damage 
when you fall and you're under stress, you feel it hurting, you tense up and to protect yourself and that causes damage. That's not what you're paying good money to have done. You're not paying a therapist to break you. That's not what you're doing. And, yeah. and on the other side, anything less than seven, that's pretty much fruit for So if you're going for relaxation and you don't really want them to dig in, then fine. You won't, less than seven's fine. Uh, but you gotta communicate these things. I, we are not mind readers. We do not spend gobs of money to go and learn how to touch naked bodies appropriately for you not to tell us that we're doing anything. We're not helping you. Uh, I dropped my list. Oh. It comes back to comfort and communication. There are such vital parts of massage. I mean, when you think about it, a massage, you're in a sm fairly small room with music and a table and you're naked if you opted to. If you didn't, then you don't have to then ignore the naked comment. But you're on a table and laying down and you're relying on somebody else to make you feel better. And they're not giving you anything for it. They're touching you to make you feel better. That's intimidating. That's kind of scary. I'll admit, when I first started massage school, I was excited to learn a new trade, but I was a little leery having strange people touching me for hours. OK, we only did an hour at a time, but still, it was really intense to get comfortable with the concept that somebody other than my family was going to be touching me and there wasn't going to be anything between me and them but a sheet. Took a while, but I'm comfortable with it now. I've got to be. And that comes into the tolerance thing. If you prefer, if you are more comfortable keeping a conversation going, talking about mundane things, work, your pets, the weather, your car, things that aren't personal, things that set, okay, keep a little bit of a barrier between you and your therapist and you want to talk that whole hour, it's your money. You can talk that whole damn hour. I will probably not really ask you questions unless I've seen you several times and then there, after I've learned some about you, I might ask you a couple questions in the beginning until you relax because you tend to benefit more when you're completely relaxed and when you're completely relaxed you don't you don't really talk you're kind of in this zoning out state which is the key but if it takes two or three sessions of you talking my ear off for you to get to that point then it's going to take that long and I'm okay with that on the flip side if you don't want anyone to talk to you while you're getting a massage, you don't have to say anything. The most I'm going to ask is, is the pressure okay? Are you comfortable? Do you need any pillows in any places, like under your knees, under your hips, under your shoulders, to make you more comfortable? And then from there, it's fine. You can just listen to the music and take a nap while I work. That's fine. It's your hour. But at the same time, you get, if so, uh, some therapists use CDs for their music, I use my iPod. I have 400 songs on my iPod. I have a playlist that I use for massage. But if you don't want to listen to classical music, I mean, my music's all Lord of the Rings and Star Wars and stuff like that because I'm a nerd. But if you don't want to listen to that, if you are more comfortable listening to rock, heavy metal, jazz, for any other genre, country, any other genre, ask your therapist, say, hey, is there any way that we could have this, that we can listen to this during my massage? If they don't have it then, have them take a note of it after your massage, and they, and if they're worth it, they will go out of their way, they will get the music that you want to listen to while you're getting your massage. It's your massage. It's your hour. It's your time. I've had them ask if I could put on heavy death metal while they were getting their massage. 
I have to turn it way down so we're not disturbing other rooms. But I have no problem listening to that while I'm massaging. I just warn them that I'm probably going to move a little faster than normal. But hey, if they're fine with that, that's fine. I don't mind. That, that is your choice. That is for you. That, the music is there so is that I'm not going batty in a quiet room. That music is there so is that I'm not going stir crazy and so you're not feeling awkward that there's this silence between us. Because if you're not talking, there's that silence between two strangers that gets a little awkward after a while. It's awkward pretty quickly when you're doing three or four massages a day. If there's a different kind of music you want to listen to, bring in your own. If you know that they have a CD player, bring in your own CD. If you know that they listen to, that they have an MP3 player plug, bring in your MP3 player. If you don't want anything to do with talking to them, bring your own music and your headphones. I have like three or four clients that do that. They just listen well, for them. If they don't, then they're talking to me the entire time, and they know that they're not gonna, that they're going to talk the whole time. And they don't want to talk the whole time. They want to relax, so they bring in their own music. That's fine. It helps them. I just tap on their shoulder to me, and I have them tap my leg to let me know if it's too hard. Uh, also, your skin is your largest organ in your entire body. It is an organ. So when you're getting a massage, there's lotions involved. If there's, if you have a skin allergy of any kind, let your therapist know. If you can't have vitamin E, let us know. Cause that eliminates a lot of things we can use. If you can't have lotion because you break out, if you can't have a certain type of lotion because you'll break out, then we gotta make sure we have oil for you. If you can't have oil, we got, you need to let us know so that we know what we can and cannot use. Trust me, you do not want to have a major breakout because of your massage. I personally, because of my eczema, I can't have lotion. I can't have oils. There is all of, like, two oils that I can have. Jojoba is one of them. If, you, if, I, if they have nothing but oil, it has to be jojoba oil, otherwise I will break out. So I, I usually use lotions. Otherwise, I'm scrubbing my hands raw to get that oil off. I'll use it if I have to for the client, but it's not my preferred. And that about wraps up my whole little bit of an educational spiel there for you. I hope this is helpful for some of you who are thinking about a massage but aren't quite certain. Those of you who do get massages but didn't realize that you can tell your therapist things, you can dictate your massage, whether it's a spa massage, a clinical massage, sports massage, chair massage even. Communicate to your therapist, let them know. And I know that in, mo in several states it's being passed where you can ask at any point to see their license and they have to produce it. That way you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this person has the education required to touch you and make you feel better. Which is what this job is all about. Now, I gotta get going, but if there are any questions that I haven't answered, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, if you are a therapist, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Go ahead and make a video response. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Or as somebody who gets a massage and you want to share some experiences, video response, leave comments below. I would love to hear from you guys. And this is Shoe Bandit signing out.